And let's go to President Obama's comments Monday at the Presidential Medal of Freedom ceremony, where, among those honored posthumously, were James Cheney, Andrew Goodman and Mickey Schwerner, who were killed 50 years ago by the Klan after traveling to Mississippi to register black voters. In this White House ceremony, President Obama noted it took more than four decades to bring the organizer of the murders, Edgar Ray Kellen, to justice. On June 21st, 1964, three young men two white and one black, set out to learn more about the burning of a church in Neshoba County, Mississippi. James Earl Cheney, 21 years old. Andrew Goodman, 20 years old. Michael Henry Schwerner, 24 years old. Young men. And in that Freedom Summer, these three Americans refused to sit on the sidelines. Their brutal murder by a gang of Ku Klux Klan members shook the conscience of our nation. It took 44 days to find their bodies, 41 years to bring the lead perpetrator to justice. And while they're often remembered for how they died, we honor them today for how they lived, with the idealism and the courage of youth. James, Andrew, and Michael could not have known the impact they would have on the civil rights movement or on future generations. And here today, inspired by their sacrifice, we continue to fight for the ideals of equality and justice for which they gave their lives. Today, we are honored to be joined by James's daughter, Angela, Andrew's brother, David, and Michael's wife, Rita. The Presidential Medal of Freedom is the nation's highest civilian honor. We turn now to excerpts of a documentary titled Neshoba, The Price of Freedom, which tells the story of the three civil rights activists. Civil rights workers have arrived in Mississippi to begin a summer-long campaign. They were trained for it on a college campus in Ohio. This week, another group of volunteers is being taught what to expect in Mississippi and how to cope with it. Okay. They are taught how nonviolently to protect themselves when attacked. We're going down there. We're trying to face a real situation that will occur, namely there will be a mob at the courthouse. We also want the white students who are playing the mob to get used to saying things, calling out epithets, calling people niggers and nigger lovers. There is some mystery and some fear concerning three of the civil rights workers, two whites from New York City and a Negro from Mississippi. Police say they arrested the three men for speeding yesterday, but released them after they posted bond. They have not been heard from since. First, the known facts. James Cheney, Andrew Goodman, and Michael Schwerner went to Mississippi to help register Negroes as voters. Cheney, a 20-year-old Mississippian, was a veteran of the civil rights movement in his home state. He assisted in the training classes. Goodman, 20, a New York college student, had never participated in the civil rights movement, but a friend says Goodman could never understand how some people could be so lacking in compassion. Schwerner, 24, a seasoned New York social worker, left Mississippi, where he had worked since January, to assist in the training school at Oxford, Ohio. The film, The Shoba, goes on to document the role local Mississippi law enforcement agents and the Ku Klux Klan played in the murder of James Cheney, Andrew Goodman, and Michael Schwerner. Rights workers were missing, and they had last been uh, seen going up to investigate a church burning in the Shoba County. It's 35 miles from Meridian to Philadelphia, then 12 miles to Longdale, where the church had been burned. That afternoon, the three were seen at the church site and at the home of its lay leader. About 2.30, they headed west toward Philadelphia. Cheney was outside changing the tire. They had a flat, and there was Price. And when they pulled up, he said, I'm arresting Cheney for speeding, Swerner and Goodman for investigation. Cecil Price, deputy sheriff, saw him and stopped him, and he takes him into the jail. So somehow, some way, the message gets out to the Klan, and then they have to organize. Edgar Ray Killen began to kind of coordinate things that night, kind of gathered a group of guys, had one of them go get gloves so they wouldn't have fingerprints, told them the guys they wanted were there in the jail. By 10 o'clock, Price says he had located a justice of the peace who fined the trio $20. Price tells what happened then. They paid the fine and I released them. That's the last time we saw any of them. The boys were driving back from the county jail and they started down the road toward Meridian. Then they were stopped by a police car and there would be this group of Klan people. They arrested them and 
put them in uh, Price's car. And then turned right into a, a gravel rural road. And Alton Wayne Roberts grabbed Schwerner and he said to him, are you that inward lover? And Schwerner said, sir, I understand how you feel. Bam, shot him. Grabbed Goodman. Goodman didn't get even get a word out. Shot Goodman. Cheney, by this point, obviously realizing what's going down, took off. We know he was shot by several people. They also apparently beat him. An excerpt from the documentary Neshoba, The Price of Freedom. President Obama has just awarded the Presidential Medal of Freedom to the three civil rights activists posthumously murdered by the Klan 50 years ago. James Cheney, Andrew Goodman, Mickey Schwerner. That excerpt includes comments from U.S. Justice Department attorney John Doerr, who died early this month at the age of 92. He was awarded the Presidential Medal of Freedom in 2012. This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org.